Giorno. Thanks, everybody, uh, for coming. Thanks to the consulate, beautiful venue. Um, really excited to hear all the other amazing speakers. And Arna, thank you for pushing us to, to talk. Um, don't start the seven minutes yet, because I haven't started yet. Um, the title uh, of this presentation uh, is Sean. Uh, Sean, in Sanskrit, uh, means pride. Uh, you'll find out in about seven minutes uh, what Sean is, what, what he means, but he's definitely, the name Sean has defined my life. Uh, this is also a very personal story, so um, can we have all the cameras off? That's not possible? Okay, I'm just kidding, it's fine. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, I, uh, my first startup uh, went bankrupt, and uh, I was 24 years old, and as a first generation Indian American, uh, that was obviously uh, tough. It was obviously a humbling experience, but uh, growing up with uh, tiger mom and tiger dad who wanted, to be, wanted you to be a lawyer, doctor, engineer, I should say lawyer, doctor, engineer. Um, <laughs> you know, I was a failed entrepreneur, and so at that Diwali party in 2001, there was an auntie in the background saying, that kid went bankrupt, and it was humiliating, it was embarrassing, um, and it was really hard to get, to get over. Um, but I did, and I'm really happy that that was my first experience, because actually seeing failure in the face, eye to eye, uh, enabled me to instantly become stronger, right? And seeing the depths of the, of the depth um, enables you to, to fly high. Um, what actually, one, one thing motivated me to, to keep on going, ended up buying the assets and starting a new company that did well. One of our advisors told us, you know, never give up. Never ever give up. Ironically, that man, uh, who I still keep in touch with, not as often, he returns my emails one of a hundred times, is El Elon Musk. Uh, but he was one of the folks who was on our board early on. He said, listen, this is just the beginning. This is a journey. Um, the second company in which I, I bought those assets back, moved to San Francisco, was one of the first mobile marketing platforms. Um, one of the stories Arno actually wanted, wanted me to tell, one quick an anecdote, is actually, um, how we were selling just through pure persistence. So phone call, fax, email, phone call, fax, email, phone call, fax, email. We were trying to get, uh, Madonna was like a dream customer for this platform. And so finally landed a meeting with Warner Brothers Records, drove down to Burbank from San Francisco at that time, was pitching mobile marketing for about 50 minutes. And then the woman at the end of the meeting said, um, so how many trucks you got in your fleet? And I said, trucks in my fleet? Like, what? Do you, I rented this car, like, what are you talking about? So yeah, mobile marketing, you put like Madonna's face on the side of a truck and drive around the country, right? And I was like, oh my God. Months of planning and anticipation uh, and she had no clue what I was talking about. I was like, no, mobile phone marketing. Uh, lo and behold, uh, the moment was serendipitous. Turned out, she's like, I have no idea what you're talking about, but this guy might. Uh, he, she introduced me to uh, Madonna's manager who happened to be there and we jammed for a couple hours, ended up running a few campaigns for Madonna uh, Madonna joined our board, so that, that was really exciting. Um, advisory board, not board of directors, thank God. She wanted us to change the name of the company from Ipsh, which was a bad name, to Water. Under my breath, I said, you know, why don't you change your name, Madonna? <laughs> <clears throat> uh, we sold that business in 2005 uh, to, uh, to Omnicom here in New York. Uh, that was a good time. It was a nice closure after bankruptcy, buying back the assets, going through the six-year cycle. Uh, at that time, also, I made uh, my very first investment, I'm a full-time investor now, uh, that company turned out to be a unicorn, a company called AdMob. Um, left Omnicom as soon as I could, realizing entrepreneurs cannot work for other people. We work 100 hours a week to not work 40 hours a week. And started a company called Buzzed here in New York. Uh, raised four million in venture capital. Um, I have three minutes left, or is that four minutes left? That's three minutes left. Uh, and, uh, you know, after raising uh, the capital, um, actually, amazing thing happened. Uh, I actually met uh, my wife uh, soon after we launched the company, who's in the back. Um, she doesn't want any attention, though. And um, uh, we actually met during the Barack Obama campaign in 2008. Uh, the president actually now says that he, he brought us together, but he, he really didn't. But, um, like most entrepreneurs do, we convince other people, like you all in the room, to, to follow their passions, to quit their day jobs and follow their passions. 
I hope a few folks quit their day jobs tomorrow, not just from my talk, for, but from others. So I got Rushman to quit her day job, my wife, uh, from Wall Street, and follow her passions, which were in politics. Uh, Rushman became uh, the first Indian American woman to run for US Congress in 2010. We ran here in New York in the 14th District. Uh, folks said that we'd get you know 1% of the vote. We got a lot more than that, not enough to win, uh, but we still ran, we lost. Around the same time that Rushman lost, Buzz actually failed. We ran out of money. Um, other companies in the space, like Foursquare, et cetera, kind of hit the iPhone wave. We, we miscalculated that a little bit. Uh, so it was, a, it was a little bit of a tough year, uh, especially after losing an election and, and your company is failing. But again, pick yourself up, keep iterating. Ended up pivoting Buzz to a company called Local Response. And Reshma ended up working for uh, Bill de Blasio, who's our now mayor, as the deputy public advocate in New York. Uh, more importantly, Rushman at that time created uh, Girls Who Code, an organization that she's running now. In uh, the next year in 2012, uh, we got married. Unfortunately, it was one of the happiest days, the happiest day, I should say, she's in the room, of my life. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, there's a cloud over, over our heads. Uh, Rushma uh, got pregnant a few months earlier, and we actually miscarried a month before the wedding. So that was a really tough time. We didn't know how to deal with it. Uh, of course, after talking to a lot of folks, you know, we, we came to the realization that, listen, this is just a problem we need to fix. We tried again in uh, 2013. Uh, we miscarried again. Uh, during that time, it was also a little bit of a rough patch at local response. Uh, I ended up leaving the company. Resh was now running for public advocate when Bill de Blasio was running for mayor, uh, her second election. We got a lot more votes the first time around, but we lost. We lost that one too. So that was a tough year. Second miscarriage. I left my company. <clears throat> uh, Reshma lost her election. The next year in 2014, um, we tried again. We got to keep on trying to make this happen. This is the most important thing to us. This is try number three. It didn't work. Um, we were pretty much, uh, felt definitely hopeless. We felt um, obviously sadness, um, but I think the, 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 the most overwhelming feeling was not knowing, not seeing a path, right? You can try a lot, you need to see a path. Eventually we found uh, a doctor who gave us a solution. And we worked towards that solution. Um, this year, in 2015, uh, February 7th, 2015, we gave birth to a baby boy. Um, we overcame, we overcame uh, those struggles, right? It's not one, one strike, three strike, third strike, you're out. Second strike, third strike, you're out. It's, it's keep trying until you connect. Uh, I ended up now raising a, a large fund, ENIAC Ventures focused on mobile first startups. Um, that's going very well. We closed our third fund December 31st. And Girls Who Code now is reaching tens and hundreds of thousands of girls um, to really you know, close the gender gap in STEM education. So Sean, can anybody guess what it means? Sean is the name of our son. He's in the back right now with Rashma. Is he awake or not? There he is. There he is. Give it up for Sean. That's like the Lion King moment. Um, and I think what we're most proud of, again, Sean's name, is, is the resilience we had. You know, and, and I hope that you know, when he sees this, when he's old enough to watch YouTube in like two months, um, <laughs> that, that he'll recognize how proud we are to have him, that he's the product of our persistence and our resilience. And I truly believe this is my life story, but I've seen it in a lot of other stories, that it's all about resilience, persistence. It's all about failing, getting up right after you fail. 
you can do anything. Thanks, guys.